Hello and welcome to Warcraft Daily for today, the 17th of May 2013. Or rather, well, nightly, because it's 3am at the minute, yay! So this is going to be a quick summary of a recent interview with Tom Chilton on, I think, Blizzard Insider or something like that. It's pretty interesting, it's not a mountain of new information, it's really just going over the patch and, uh, and that kind of thing. So there's also been a few other posts on PvP, but I feel that I've already covered those with my own opinion, and they really seem to be more opinion pieces by the blue, so I'm not going to cover that. Today's episode is just going to be the interview. So the way this is summarized, it sort of goes in a sort of like a flow of different topics, starting with Throne of Thunder and moving through. So to start off for Throne of Thunder, they've said that overall the whole team are very happy, and this is especially with Lei Shen. And they actually seem to be rather surprised that the determination worked as well as it did. And it really did work quite well, even though it promoted the mindset of, oh, we'll just like wipe five times and get our determination buff. It, it still accomplished its goal, perhaps not in the most gameplay oriented way, but it gets people through LFR and they get their gear, I suppose. That said, if you're making a game, is that really what you want? Not sure. So, yeah, overall though, it seems like everyone thinks the patch went fantastically. Now, he's been talking about how the patch works story-wise, and it's pretty much the story of the Horde back at home, while Garrosh has been off doing his tomfoolery in Pandaria and fucking everyone over, and pissing everyone off. Uh, pretty much, the Horde populace is really pissed, they are tired of the constant war, and you know, half their soldiers getting killed by amazing alliance hunters like myself. Wink wink. Why are there wings there? I don't know. But yeah, so the Horde populace are pissed off. Vol'jin has started a open rebellion with his tribe of trolls. That's all fun. And the patch pretty much tells the story of that, essentially. The, the open rebellion, the sort of the fight, the start of the fight anyway. Of course, we won't see the full fight until patch 5.4. And uh, yeah, in terms of features, we have new scenarios, obviously, um, including the new heroic scenarios, which were the sort of pre-made three-man group things, which seemed pretty cool. There's also a new event. Uh, this is in the form of the Escalation bar uh, yes, Escalation uh, Barons, I think. Stuff. Pretty much, you're fighting to destroy Orgrimmar supply lines and stuff. Uh, when you kill enemies, you can get drops and loads of cool things. And this will get you sort of like loot, rewards, and the general things that dailies give you. It all seems to progress things and help along Vol'jin's Rebellion. Of course it's available to both Alliance and Horde, but I'd assume in a different format because it wouldn't make much sense if the Alliance were helping in as much of a direct way in the Horde's own Open Rebellion. Probably like involved with SI7 or something like that. But overall, it seems interesting. They've said that their design intent is that instead of this being full of dailies like another daily hub, they hope that it'll feel much more open and dynamic. So, yeah, I hope you're right, Tom, because Throne of Thunder really worked for that. Not. Pretty much as soon as everyone hit Exalted, they stopped doing dailies. And the only way the progression was increased was the few people who were not already Exalted. That was a definite problem. Now, there's been a whole bunch of changes for PvP, as we all know, and uh, basically Tom was talking a lot about the new Resilience system, and that because Resilience is now a baseline thing, since PvE players are not going to just sort of get completely fucked as soon as they come in, and uh, it now de-emphasizes the role of gear and improves the, uh, the role of skill. So the better you are, hopefully, the better you will do. And this that's the way PvP should be. It's player versus player, not like equipment versus equipment, as it sort of tends to be in its way too zergy. Uh, in terms of actual PvP additions, he went over the new battleground and arena, with the new battleground being uh, the mine one, was it Deepwing Gorge, Deepwind Gorge, something like that. It's pretty much, it's, it's actually quite interesting. It's a mix of King of the Hills, or your standard Arithai Basin sort of deal, and Capture the Flag, in that you're going around capturing objectives bring them back to your base, and that'll give you like an infusion, like a bonus 200 points, instead of the sort of points over time that the King of the Hill sort of style gives you. So it seems interesting actually, like quite a fun battleground. And the new Tiger Peak Arena, and they, well he emphasized in the interview 
that it makes good use of high ground. It has these fences. I've seen they've, they've mentioned these fences quite a lot. Basically, the fences can be shot through. Uh, they don't break line of sight or anything, but they have a collision with players. And the important thing about this is it allows ranged players to hold their ground. Um, stuff like that. So it seems actually quite interesting. If I get into uh, if I get into the old arena stuff, perhaps I'll do a few videos or something. Chances are I won't though. And uh, for scenarios, they've said that there's definitely a design difference from the original Zergi scenarios to the current ones. And they feel the heroic modes because of the bonus objective system it adds a failure state to the game. And I think failure state's pretty important in every game in terms of design. Uh, you need something to be on the line rather, you know, other than just your own time. Like, you know, you lose the potential to get more valor points. I think it's actually a really good way and it suits an MMO well because you're never going to feel like your time is utterly wasted since it's not a massive amount of VP that you would lose. Now in terms of loot, he ran over this saying that uh, they're pretty jazzed about their new spec thing. And then basically in this you can select a spec that you want to receive loot for. So if, say, you're like a healer and you want to exploit the healer at LFR queue, which is really short, but you actually want to get, get, like gear up your DPS, you just set your loot spec to DPS, you can play through the whole thing as a healer and get DPS gear, so that's pretty nice. Hopefully it won't lead to people with good gear not knowing how to play their role well. That would suck. And they've also said that Barons can reward Tier 2 armor, so that's pretty damn nice. Uh, tier 2 it's pretty cool for a lot of classes. I think initially it's like a, uh, it's like a, bleh. My brain's not working, it's 3am. A uh, cosmetic version of the gear. But I actually think this can be upgraded with additional resources to a uh, 476, something like that. But yeah, that's actually it for the show. Pretty much covered the interview. It's more of a summary deal, there's not much new information, but sometimes it's nice just to have everything sort of went over. In terms of schedule, I'm probably going to do a few overview videos for the different aspects of Patch 5.3 this weekend, if I have the time. Release, um, release those videos before the patch drops on Tuesday, which is, well, Tuesday for Americans, Wednesday for Euro, which is when I believe it'll drop, I'll be out of that or the following week. So yes, that's it. Please like and subscribe, it helps out the show a lot. I'm getting more viewers and things and stuff, and it's all going up. I had 10 subscribers in one day, that's not happened before. So yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.